Hi everybody, today I'm going to talk about one of the most important lesions of the meniscus. Uh, I'm going to talk about the horizontal meniscal tears. And generally speaking, there are three basic uh, meniscal patterns or meniscal tear patterns or prim primary patterns of meniscal tears. Okay, there is the horizontal tear, the vertical longitudinal tear and the radial tear. In this video, I'm going to talk about the horizontal tear. In the next videos, I will go over the vertical, longitudinal, and the radial tears. And the, all, all the other meniscal tears, or almost all the other meniscal tears, they are a combination of these three basic patterns of meniscal tears. And sometimes in, speci in a specific place, as the root ligament tears, or with a specific type of meniscal fragment, as the bucket handle tears. Okay, so let's talk today, Opa. Let's talk today about the horizontal meniscal tears. And it is one of the most common types of meniscal tears, as I've told you. The tear is parallel to the articular surface. Okay, so it, because of the shape of this tear, it's also known as the cleavage tear or the fish mouth tear. And the good news about this type of tear is that it does not compromise the circumferential fibers. So, as you already know, because you have watched one of my first videos talking about the meniscal functions, the circumferential fibers, they are very important in order to keep, to maintain the meniscal function, the hoop stress, to, to, to keep up with the hoop stress, the hoop stress. So, that's the good thing about the horizontal tear. It does not compromise the circumferential fibers. The posterior horn of the middle meniscus is the most common place of the horizontal tear. From the posterior horn of the middle meniscus, it can go anteriorly to the meniscal body and to the anterior horn of the middle meniscus. On the left, uh, on the left, not on the left, on the lateral side, uh, there is a controversy. Uh, where is the most common place of the meniscal, the horizontal meniscal tear? If it is in the post, if it is in the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus or the meniscal body, okay? I've seen in both places, but I've most of the cases I've seen them in the meniscal body, but just keep in mind that there, are, there, that there is a controversy in the literature about the most common place uh, in the lateral meniscus. And most of the time, this horizontal tear, it extends to the inferior or superior articular surfaces, not exactly at the free edge, close to the free edge, okay? But it's still a horizontal tear. Don't call it a horizontal oblique tear, okay? Sometimes it's hard, I know. When we have, when there is a tear in this middle third of the meniscus, and sometimes I'll call this a horizontal oblique tear, but most of the time, it's just a horizontal tear, okay? So keep that in mind too. And this is a tear that occur most of the time in the middle-aged and elderly persons. And here's the prevalence according to the age of the patient. And patients can be asymptomatic, that's a problem, because we can diagnose this step, but it's not the problem of the patient. Uh, or the patient uh, can have a neostroatrosis without a history of trauma. And sometimes the pain of the patient, it's not caused by the uh, horizontal tear itself. It's caused by another lesion that comes along with the horizontal tear in a knee with osteoarthrosis, for example. And so this tear is also called uh, degenerative tear, but this term can be misleading because it can also occur in young patients, especially athletes, and it is related to trauma. So a subset of patients that present the horizontal tear they are young patients, especially athletes, so it can be misleading, call these tears degenerative tears. Of course, more, almost all of them are degenerative tears, but I prefer to name the tear by its morphology and not by its supposed origin, so I think that it works better. And here we can see the horizontal tear, and here in the axial plane or uh, seen from above, uh, we can see the meniscus here and the horizontal horizontal tear in the posterior horn of the middle meniscus. So it can form a horizontal 
que form horizontal flap tears. So when one of the two leaves migrates, it can form the horizontal flap tears. I'm going to talk about that in, a, in another video, not today. And the horizontal tear is the main tear associated with a parameniscal cyst. Keep that in mind too, okay? If you see a horizontal tear, look for a parameniscal cyst. If you see a parameniscal cyst, look for a horizontal tear. That's the most, uh, they match, they come along together, right? So uh, this is another thing that we should pay attention when we are analyzing the, the morphology of the meniscal tear. And here again, the horizontal tear is here. In this region, let's say that this is the posterior horn of the medial meniscus, and when I when I I perform some cuts on the short axis of the of the meniscus here, let's say the sagittal plane here, I can see the tear in different images touching the articular surface. Okay, it's better if the tear touches to at least two consecutive. Uh, images we can uh, we can see the tear touching the articular surface, or it can be uh, a tear touching uh, the articular surface in one plane, and in the other plane you can see also the tear touching in at least one image. So that's the rule, the true slice touch rule, something like that. I'm gonna call about that. I'm gonna talk about that in the future, right? But I just wanted to brief you about that. Uh, before I go over the subject in the end of this video. And when uh, we perform a, uh, a slice on the long axis of the meniscus, that's the image that we see. It's like, uh, it looks like an Oreo. And I call that an Oreo sign, but an Oreo sign, it's not a sign or it's, it's not pathognomonic of meniscal tear. Okay, you have to look at the, the short axis the images of the short axis of the meniscus to be sure that the tear touches the articular surface because if it doesn't touch, it's just a it's, it's just a meniscal degeneration. So here, that's the first example that I have for you. Uh, we can see a tear on the posterior horn of the medial meniscus extending to the superior articular surface. Here, here you can see. Uh, small parameniscal cysts. As I told you, it's very common this association between the horizontal tear and the parameniscal cyst. So that's the image you can see in one play, in one slice, two slices, three slices here, four slices. Okay, yeah, we, it's a a lot of slices you can see uh, this tear. So it's really a meniscal tear. And looking here in the coronal plane. We can see this high signal intensity in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. We can identify that the tear extends to the meniscal body right here. And here is a little bit oblique, but we can see the tear extending to the meniscal body. So here is the Oreo sign. Uh, I'm not sure when I see just this image here, I'm not sure that this is a meniscal tear. I have to check on the, on the short axis uh, to, to be confident that this is a tear. And the axial plane, it's not a good plane to find a horizontal tear, but it's a good plane to measure the parameniscal cysts. You can, we can see the parameniscal cysts around the area of the meniscal tear. So that we use the axial images to, to evaluate the extension of the main parameniscal cysts. And here the oral sign again, it can be a meniscal degeneration or a meniscal tear. You gotta check with the short uh, with the images of the short axis of the meniscus. Uh, here another case, another meniscal tear, posterior horn of the middle meniscus, a horizontal meniscal tear. This time extending to the inferior articular surface. We can see the tear in at least uh, let's say one, two, three, four. At least four, we have here we can also see the tear. So that's definitely a meniscal tear. And there is also uh, some parameniscal cysts right here. And here in the coronal plane, we can see the tear extending to the meniscal body right here, extending to the meniscal body to the junction between the meniscal body and the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. And here again, there are your sign. You gotta check. On the short axis, okay, I'm repeating that again. 
you gotta check in the short axis to see if the this high signal intensity it goes it touches the articular surface or not and here in the axial plane it's it's not a good plane to find out the horizontal tear but it is a good plane to find the parameniscal cysts okay so here we can see these small parameniscal cysts around the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and this other example it's a good one to show a meniscal tear a horizontal tear a medial meniscus tear that doesn't follow the two slice touch rule that i talked to you that i've mentioned earlier in this video we can see notice here there is a meniscal tear here but we can see just in one image that the tear is touching the inferior articular surface of the meniscus here here it's not touching anymore and here it's not touching anymore but what let what, what makes me uh, what makes me feel confident in this case is the parameniscal cyst look the parameniscal cyst here look the high signal intensity inside the meniscus as well and we have a huge parameniscal cysts here and it extending close to the neurovascular bundle the popliteal neurovascular bundle i'm gonna show uh, let uh, here is better to show this parameniscal cyst extending near to the pop the popliteal neurovascular bundle i will show that better in the other uh in the next slice on the axle in the next sequence on the axial plane but again we can't see any other image where the meniscus is touching the articular surface okay so we can just see in one image so it's not following the two slice touch rule to be confident about the meniscal tear but in this case i'm confident because of the parameniscal cysts cyst it helps me a lot it's helping me a lot in this case right here here in the axial plane we can uh, we can appreciate the parameniscal cyst right here and notice that the parameniscal cyst it's very close to the uh popliteal neurovascular bundle we gotta uh write this down in our report we gotta uh call the attention of the surgeon about that so what is it we are approaching the end of this video and i'm i'm gonna talk a little bit about the two slice touch rule for the diagnosis of meniscal tear so this is the paper He's, it's from 2006 from dr desmet and uh, what they what they state in this paper is this the signal to the meniscal surface must be seen two images on the same plane corona or sagittal or in one or one on each plane positive predictive value in cases that we see two images touching the articular surface is 94 percent for the middle meniscus and 96 percent for the lateral meniscus uh, so it should be described as uh, uh the, the meniscus torn if the signal is seen in just just one image the positive predictive value it goes to 43 percent to the middle meniscus and it goes it drops down to 18 percent to the lateral meniscus so it's still possible right it's not that you know there is no tear no it's still possible but it's less likely and there are some uh secondary findings like the parameniscal cyst that can help you to be more confident about the meniscal tear as the case that i just showed you uh, a few slides before and in this case uh, it should be described as uh, the meniscus is possibly torn but it's not as described as torn you gotta you gotta how you, you gotta let some space here to to the to, to the meniscus not be torn okay so that is the two slice rule and what about the treatment what are the treatments or what what is the treatment of the horizontal meniscal tears so most of these tears are symptomatic and the symptoms cannot be related to the meniscal tear itself and generally speaking at first the treatment is non-surgical uh, surgical indication in case of mechanical symptoms okay so because if you if the tear if you have a fragment or the tear is blocking uh the movement of the knee so you have a mechanical symptom and you gotta treat that and when conservative treatment has failed the partial meniscectomy or meniscal repair can be considered and here uh 
almost everybody, uh, 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 the, the standard treatment is partial mastectomy. But nowadays, there is a trend to the meniscal repair, even for the degenerative lesions, even for these degenerative tears. Okay, so that, that's it, the trend. It's that in the literature is the trend with the orthopedic surgeons right now save the meniscus and they are uh, repairing this. Uh, also, they are starting starting repairing this horizontal degenerative tear. Let's say that. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hopefully uh, I could contribute a little bit for you understand of the horizontal tear. Uh, I have. Uh, I hope you had a good time in this video thank you for your time and have a great day and see you in the next video